45 minute episodes in. Oh, shit. <laughs> Happy New Year. Welcome to more BS. man do the damn thing <laughs> it's going down <laughs> uh, so this is how we do more bs for your life <laughs> next level is not impressed <laughs> so, oh man as you know we try to record or at least especially for this month a little bit in advance uh because we don't want to be working during the holidays. You want to be working during the holidays? Like, you don't want to be working. The, so, BS doesn't be whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, we're trying to get two episodes recorded right now so that we can release it for you guys a little bit later so that you can enjoy it, you know, in the background during your holidays, during your whatever, during when you're stuffing your turkey. Whatever you do. I don't know what <laughs> stuffing you do. your turkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But anyways, so, make yeah. sure you check the description below. Yeah, check the description below. We got affiliates, we got sponsors, we got all kinds of nonsense down there. Make sure you guys do follow. Am I glitching out a little bit? Am I good? Uh, last episode you glitched a little bit. I don't know if it was just me, but like your audio was good, so you're good. Okay, I'm not uploading anymore. You know what? I do have to restart my computer. Now that I think about it, I'm gonna close a couple of these windows down. I'm not uploading anything right now, so I know that for sure. So we'll see, I guess. But I don't know. I'm gonna, you know what? Maybe I'll turn on um I I'll I'm gonna turn on my uh my MSI afterburner. Maybe that'll boost my <laughs> my power. <laughs> the fan just went off. <laughs> cool. So happy freaking New Year's almost. Um what's today? New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, guys. Today's New Year's Eve. So today's topic, and of course, I love I love not to tell next level crap. So that way we could just record it and we just go and then he gives me this look the whole time. <laughs> it's this, true. This is true. So today's episode is we're going to talk about new tech, new tech evolution 2022. <laughs> what do you guys want to see for the new year? This is your new tech resolution um for the new year i'm terrible bro i am absolutely a hundred thousand million percent terrible because my life and my tech and my purchases right now revolve around one thing crypto fucking crypto yeah but that doesn't mean you might not be expecting something or waiting for something or want something there's there's a couple conversations that we've had that you're just like, right. that'll be nice. It would be nice, but every freaking dollar that I get, crypto or not, goes right back into building my crypto business. Like I'm buying ASIC miners right now. Like I've switched from GPUs because you knew I was going crazy with GPUs, and now I'm going into ASIC mining. So okay, so what type of what type of what type of cards are you looking for to come out this year? Um, like graphics cards. I'm not really interested in graphics cards anymore. However, they're saying that they're re-releasing uh 3080, uh, NVIDIA 3080, uh, with more VRAM. Uh, should be interesting. I don't know if it's going to be LHR or low hash rate when it comes to crypto mining. Um, so I'm not I'm not 100 sure. But like I said, I'm not really messing with graphics cards anymore. Okay, so what is that you're looking forward for this year then with, with what you're doing? With what I'm doing, I'm looking at ASIC miners and I'm kind of starting to do a little bit of what, what's called speculative mining when it comes to crypto. So kind of coins that aren't really worth anything and your ROI is a little bit higher, your return on your investment, because you're speculating that within the next three to six months, these coins are going to be worth a lot more and it's going to go up for you. So like I'm, I just... 
uh, a previous episode, I said I started mining uh, CKB or Nervos. Um, but there's other coins out there like Starcoin, um, Handshake, Psycoin, um, Library. Library is pretty freaking cool. And all of these coins have um, ASIC miners for them. And an and, and ASIC miner is an application specific integrated computer. And it, it, it's built to only do one thing. And it, it's built to only mine specifically, usually one to two coins. And if it's mining a second coin, it means that it's pretty much a fork of the first one. Mm -hmm. So it, that's all it's made to do is just to mine that one coin. And a lot of times they're, you know, they're, they're not cheap. So these are those ones that you're trying to get me to buy sometimes that they're already like pre-made little boxes. Well, that's a that's a like a helium miner that I was trying to get you to buy, but helium miner is a little bit different than an an, an ASIC miner. An ASIC miner usually looks like a a metal box, mm. like with big fans on it. Like I have little ones, but like the bigger ones, they're they're crazy looking. Like here, I'll I'll show you. This is what an ASIC miner looks like. So this is uh, ASICminerValue.com. This is, I'm always on this website checking the profitability on these these ones. The most profitable one is called uh, KD5, but these go for like 80 grand. 80 and, grand? Yeah. When they first came out, bro, they were uh, they were super cheap. They were actually 9,000. And because Jeez. the coin went up from pennies on the dollar to 30 bucks, now people are charging, you know, 76,000, 64,000. Mm -hmm. Like you can't even get them. You know what I mean? Because it goes up with the profitability of the coin. But that's literally what they look like. It's a metal box with fans. And they're loud. <clears throat> like, they're super loud. Some of these take up, like, over 3,000 watts. Like, the biggest one here is 6,400 watts of power. You can't even that's run nice. this on a regular outlet. It's that's crazy. ridiculous. Yeah, so, that's ridiculous. Yeah, but, I mean, these are... They can be very profitable, right? If you're looking at some of these making $200 a day... Um, obviously I'm not buying these ones for 80 grand. I'm looking at some of the cheaper ones that are making a couple dollars a day. And I'm just speculating, speculating that the coins are going to be going up in price, right? Like people who bought these ones for $8,000 when they first came out, they're laughing because you paid $8,000 and now you're making $200 a day, $200 times 30, 30 days in a month is how much like you're laughing. Uh, 20 grand like you're you're laughing bro like wait 200 times 30 is six thousand dollars a month off of a eight thousand dollar investment if you buy some of these when they first come out and you don't pay much for them and they actually blow the f up like you can get some really good returns on your money right mm -hmm. but you never know and that's the risk you take you don't yeah. know that's crazy so that's kind of the stuff that I'm looking to get into is grabbing a couple of these ones that you don't really know about and just kind of hoping that they kind of go up in price. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's what I'm looking to get into. I, a couple of the coins that I've, I've looked into is obviously CKB, which I started um, library is going to be the next one that I'm looking at. And library is very, very interesting because it's a version kind of like YouTube and you can sync your YouTube channel to it. And huh. it works off of a, a crypto coin called LRBY. And the whole concept is really cool to me. I, I synced my YouTube channel on there already. Um, and you can get uh, free crypto like in that coin for doing certain actions on their platform. So it's a really cool concept. I mean, I'm hoping that it takes off, but who knows, right? Mm -hmm. That's know. kind of where I'm at in regards to my tech. That's where <laughs> I'm going. Yeah, you never know. Um, okay, I'll I'll lure you back in. I know. <laughs> I'll lure you back in. Uh, the cube, the fire stick, the cube. There's all this like we had the Max that came out in 2021, Fire Stick TV 4K Max. Um, I want the third gen cube to come out. Yeah. I can tell you what I think the third gen cube will be if you uh, want to go down that route. And I'm going to give you something even better. Oh, shit. The best device Amazon has ever come out with and has yet to be beaten is this one. 
Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it best is relative. It has it is good for performance, but because the lack of the upgraded OS, it does have some issues. But performance wise, it's a great device. Yeah. When when people were people were still doing, look at this thing. This thing is like this thing was was the best thing that they ever made. Like, dude, seriously. You got your power, you got HDMI, Ethernet, you got a micro SD slot to expand the memory, and a USB. This was the smartest thing that they ever did. And then here's the thing. There, there's there's going to be people that are going to fight me on it and saying, like, no, that cube, the second-gen cube, you don't need all those ports because all you have to do is buy a splitter. Listen to what you said. You have to buy a splitter. Yeah. You just buy this one and you're done. That's yeah. it. I don't have to mod this thing. When people did tests and uh, uh, benchmarks and tutu, like all that stuff, the what is the second gen? Second gen Fire TV box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This thing still outperforms the like anything that that, that Amazon has come out after this. When they stopped doing this, they came out with this little dongle thing that wasn't that good. And then they came out with that cube. First gen was horrible. Second gen was much better. But it's not better than this. And this is from like, what, 2017, I think it was? I think it was before then. Maybe even before then, yeah. And that that box, when people throw it in... like in, you know, In 2021, people were still testing that thing out to see if it was better. And it still outperformed the second gen Fire Cube. Um, there, there is even I think there's even a spreadsheet that Amazon has, and it shows like the specs and everything, the breakdown. Oh, Troy Point did one too. Troy Point did one where he lists the 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 power, the bandwidth, like every like in detail, everything about every single device out there. Number one. This guy right here, that box, the Fire TV box. Number two was the second gen Fire Cube. And my my biggest thing is, if you're gonna come up with something new, it better be freaking better. It better yeah. be. It better. It better be better. <laughs> it better be better. Um, so I get it. They made a brand new cube, so it cannot be better than its previous predecessor because this is the first of its kind. But when you're trying to compare, like, here is a box-looking thing, and I'm going to pay this price when that old one was the same exact price, 100 and whatever. Dude, people were comparing this guy, this old box, to the Shield. Everybody was saying the Shield is more powerful than this thing. But the, but the thing is that back then, the, the conversation was always... Why get a shield when you can get one of these? You could expand the storage. It's cheaper and yeah. It's cheaper and like there's so many bonuses to it. And it was it, it it and it had the voice the voice thing built into it. It was just Okay, okay, was, okay. It was so good, you know? Like it was so what good. Do you and want I, I don't understand you say you want it to be better. Like there's things that I would like to see the cube come out with. What would you like to see come out okay if there is a third gen fire cube that comes out so this is my resolution if there's a new third gen fire cube if you want to give me three gigs of ram whatever i would love to see four i would love to see four gigs of ram I could, I'll be fine with three gigs. I'll be fine with three gigs. But if you want to give me, if you want, if you can give me four gigs of RAM, great. 16 gigs of internal memory, I'm okay with. I'm okay with. Right now, I'm only talking about like hardware stuff. I'm not even talking about like aesthetics or anything that's outside of it. I want the newest, like I think they're, I think they have their own chipset, right? Well, they were they were running off the Snapdragon S nine twenty two X, I believe. Which okay, M Logic. M Logic, yeah. 
I want w- whatever they're going to be doing on the next one. I want it to be equivalent to what Buzz TV is using. I want their chip to be equivalent to like their their the, like the forty five hundred. No, I, it's like, equivalent to the forty nine hundred. It has the same chipset. Is it? It's the same chipset. Yeah, they're both they're both using the forty nine hundred at about forty. Oh man, the S nine twenty two X. I think. Do you have the? Oh, this doesn't even have the specs in the box. But I'm pretty sure the 4900 has the S922. I'll pull up Buzz TV's thing right now. Hold on. I'm going to pull up Amazon uh, Cube second gen. Buzz TV 4900. I thought there were like one or two things below. Yeah, see, they're using the same thing. S922X, yeah. Buzz TV's 4900 is using the same thing. <clears throat> S922X. Okay, so they're 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 the same. What about the GPU? Uh I'm not sure. GPU, they're running the G52 on the on the cube. Same thing on the on the um on the Buzz TV 4900. Um and they're also running a hexacore. Yeah, it's just, it's the same CPU. The same CPU is hexacore. So too. why does it run so much slower? Why why do, why is it like? Well, it, it, two factors, right? Um, it would run a little bit slower because of the the less RAM, right? And there's more operations that are running in the background on an Amazon device than there would be on a Buzz TV device. Like that's the basic thing, right? And more operations that are running in the background is you know the more RAM that it's going to utilize. So. Yeah, I'm looking at all their specs. If if that's true, if they're using the S S nine twenty two X, which yes. Amazon says they are, a beast of a chip. Yeah, it is. It's By a itself. great chip. So, I'm actually okay with if they keep the exact same chip. I'm also okay if if they keep the same GPU. I'm even okay if they run the same CPU, at the 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 hexacore. I'm okay if they leave all of that the same. If they can give me one more gig of RAM, because right now I think they're three gigs, right? Two. No, they're two. The cube? The cube's two. Okay. They ha- if the if the Fire Stick Max is two gigs of RAM, yeah. that cube better be more. It better. I. It don't give me no two and a half. Don't give me no two and a half. I. I really do want four. I really do want four. If they can give me three, great. But I really do want four. Now, here's the biggest thing that I want, and I mean the biggest thing. If not, you're doing the same crap that NVIDIA Shield did, whereas they overclocked it. I don't I don't want that. Of course, give me the, the latest Android. If you can go Android 10, that'll be great. You don't have to go Android 11. You don't have to go to Android 12. Just give me, give me something newer than what you have. I think they're on 9 right now, Android 9, um, or Fire OS 7. So... This is what I want. I want a micro SD slot. I want a USB port. I want an Ethernet built in there. I want the HDMI. I like give me every single thing that this box had on this cube. And I and I understand it's going to be a little bit tougher because aesthetically like the, it's smaller and they just made it so that we could just plug one thing in and then everything just splits everywhere. Figure it out. I don't care if the micro SD is on the side or is on the bottom. I don't care if the USB is also on the side. Um, and then on the back, actually, you know what? They could do that too. If the cube had the micro SD and if they also had the, the, the the USB and the micro SD on the side, that's cool. On the back, give me an Ethernet port, give me the power, and then give me the HDMI. If I can get optical, that'll be awesome too. But if I can get at least those three and and the other two on the side to make it exactly like the old one, where I have everything there and I can expand it and everything, great. With the extra RAM and everything, that should give it more power. That should make it a little bit faster. I would still have to say, I don't know, man. I I know they have the newer the newer chip, the newer GPU and CPU compared to the old Fire TV, the the box. They would have to get whatever the latest 
maybe not the latest, but whatever next step above this is, that's what they need to do. But you know how they are. They don't. When Amazon starts updating their stuff, let's just say they were like, hey, we should be updating this thing. It's 20. The, the, the second gen Fire Cube came out, what, 2019? Yeah. 2019. Yeah, 2019. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure as soon as they launched it, they probably started talking about how do we upgrade this? So everything that they have is going to be based on whatever was out in 2019. Because then they have to mass produce and, you know what I mean, for the masses and stuff. So like I said, I'm okay if they keep a lot of this stuff the same. They just they just need to tweak it better so it gives you more power. I'm actually really curious. Amazon Fire. Or is it the TV box? The Fire Cube. No, the, the the box, this this old thing. Yeah. Dude, they're selling it for like 40 bucks <laughs> on eBay used refurbished. Let me see. I yeah, I I I I really I really hope they could oh here we go. Here's that set top box. So they were running, bro. This thing was eight gigs. Oh, you ready with this one? That expandable micro SD storage went up to 200 gigs, bro. It was compatible to 200 gigs. The box, straight out of the box, it, it was eight, eight by two. Mm -hmm. It was an eight by two. I don't see what uh, I'm trying to find what the chipset was. Oh, here we go. So the processor was Meditech. Oh, I remember this Meditech quad core up to two gigahertz of dual core. So one was 2.0 uh, uh, gigahertz and the other one was 1.6 gigahertz. The GPU was running the power VR GX6250. It was using the, the dual Wi-Fi Nemo, mm -hmm. Bluetooth 4.1. It supported 4K already. It supported 5.1. It supported Dolby. That's what I'm saying. This thing was like, dude, this thing was powerful, man. So I don't know. What do you think? So I'm trying to be as realistic as possible. And there's a lot of things that I agree with you about in regards to this device. So um, I don't think we're going to see four gigs of RAM. I would like that, but I don't think, I don't, I don't think we're going to see it. I, I do think that we're going to see somewhere between 2.5 and three to be realistic. That's what I think we're going to get. Oh, 2.5 will make me throw up. Dude. I know. I know, <laughs> but I, I'm being realistic and it wouldn't be unprecedented. So I, I do think that we're going to get somewhere between 2.5 and three. Um, I, I'm okay with keeping the processor. Processor is great. I do think that they will be coming up with Wi-Fi 6 on this device. Mm. Um, and the same kind of gripes that you have in regards to ports, I, I would agree with. I don't want to see a dongle. The whole reason we get a bigger device is so that we don't have a dongle. Like, what's right. the point of having a bigger device and still having to get a dongle? And I, I get it. The dongle comes with it. But it's it's kind of redundant, I think. Like, there should be a way. I don't even care if they make it bigger. You can make it bigger. Just put your ports yeah. at the bottom. I don't care, right? Like that's that's huge for me, right? So I do think that um, they're uh, well. I hope that they're going to build the ports directly in it. Now, I would like to see a USB 3.0 port, but I don't think we're going to see it, right? Mm -hmm. I think that they're going to keep it to USB C, and they're going to. I mean, I would like to see at minimum them add the Ethernet port at minimum. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, obviously, I'd like to see them add a USB 3.0, but I don't think they're going to do it. I, I just I'm I'm not I'm not going to cross my fingers and, you know, think that the, like the genie is going to come out of the bottle and grant all my wishes. Right. Ideally, I'd like to see it, but I, I, I'm just trying to be realistic. Right. I'm trying to rein myself in so I don't, you know, whatever. Um, and then. Uh, standard things. Uh, I, I don't know if they're going to be changing the GPU, but I do believe that they would overclock it, right? Same thing what they did with the, the 4K Fire Stick Max. It has the same GPU, 
as the regular 4k but they overclocked it to get an additional 50 megahertz so i think that they can take what they have in the cube and overclock it to get close to you know one gigahertz in regards to its processor uh, and running at those speeds and uh, i think that you know the additional ram and the overclocks that they would do would 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 give it a, a significant boost in regards to performance along with the wi-fi and uh i would like to see now this is going to be a little bit different but I would like to see a revamp to the controller and for it to be bundled with it. You know, they're not going to, they're, they're just going to throw the new one that they put in there. Yeah, I know, but I'm just, I, I, that's what I'd like to see. But I also think that they're also going to try to um, improve uh, Alessa. Mm -hmm. Juanita. And um, <laughs> by improving, I'm thinking that they're going to add like maybe an additional microphone. Um, what maybe have you? The voice of Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> something. They need to do something to spice it up. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what else we're going to get from it because honestly, I like the cube. I think it's a good device, and with those simple little tweaks, I think that it can last another year or two. Um, being up there with everything because we are going more and more to cloud storage. So it's going to be less resource hungry locally. Um, yeah, I think that it's going to be a good device right now. I don't know if it's still on sale, but it was on sale for like the cheapest that you would have ever seen it. Like ever. It's like 79 or 69 bucks. something like that. Yeah, that's crazy price. Crazy price. Because that hands-free Alessa is really good. Yeah. No, for sure. Absolutely. I, yeah, so we'll see. So I know that's that's like, I knew I knew if I brought an Amazon, you'd probably be like, what? Yeah, I'm gonna show you something stupid real quick. You want to see something stupid? Go stupid, go stupid. Here's what? Why is there? What? <laughs> oh, hold on. I was like, what is going on there? Let's try that again. Let's try that again. There we go. So this is the most expensive Fire TV device that you can buy right now. Fourteen hundred bucks. It's got, it's a seventy-five inch class M fifty, uh, fifty. Uh, I guess five hundred fifty series LED four K Ultra HD Smart Fire TV. What's the RAM? What's the like? What's I don't know about the specs. Why aren't you scrolling? It doesn't really That's give so you a whole lot. There you are, specs. You got to shrink it a little bit. Okay, so it's 75 inch, too much. Go one more. There you go. Go one more. Okay, and then scroll over a little bit, just a tad. Too much. So it's got Dolby Vision, HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, standard LED, which sucks, Full array local dimming. Eh. Some people might not like it. The 120 hertz. I don't know if you're actually going to get a real 120 hertz at I that price. Fourteen hundred dollars. I don't know at that price. They say you get that, but you really don't. Uh, motion rate technology 240. Raz uh, Ragza engine 4K. Featured streaming services, number of HDMI ports, brands Toshiba. I don't know if I'd be spending fourteen hundred dollars on a Toshiba. I'm just saying. I wouldn't either. But it's also a seventy-five inch. I wouldn't be buying a seventy-five inch because I just have nowhere to put seventy-five inches right now. Like, um, this all came from an article from AFTV News, and he was talking about it. But what he says here is that it is um, it checks the most boxes out of any other Fire TV device. Uh, I don't have a fire TV, not device. But my problem is, I don't care how many boxes you check, I still prefer an external third party device to be plugged in because it's easier, it's cheaper to switch out if I need to. He says these features include the uh, full array local dimming backlight, hands free voice control, which is cool to have, but is it worth that in the price? Uh, obviously, 4K resolution. I mean, I kind of wish that they would have slapped me with an AK, but. That <laughs> sounds kind of funny with an AK, AK 47, you know, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and supports for every HDR format that you can think of, including Dolby Vision, HDR 10, HDR 10 plus and HLG. What What is HLG? HLG? Yeah. What is that? Something from LG, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is Toshiba. 
What is HLG? Hold on, let me see. Uh, search for HLG. Horticulture Lighting Group? Nope. Nope. Oh, it's an LED thing. Oh. Uh, That's an LED thing. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so it says the only advanced feature this TV doesn't have can be found on another Fire TV smart device, which is the Quantum Dot QLED. Now, if they would have came with the QLEDs, I would have been like, all right, cool. Because... I mean, the QLED is, is going to be better than LED, right? For sure. If it was QLED, that price makes more sense. 100%. I agree with you. Now, who knows, right? Amazon devices and Toshiba like TVs, they go on sale, bro. So this could just be the starting price. Next thing you know, they're about 1000 bucks. Would you buy this at $1,000? Nope. No. Well, you mean you're, you're a Samsung dude anyways. I'm asking the wrong person. <laughs> well no i would for that price like if i wanted to replace like this one's a, a vizio mm. but if they're going to give me something like a 75 inch and i was going to replace this tv i i they're not going to like this price but i would say like hey if you guys could give it to me for like 700 bucks okay i'll do it i'll do it for 700 yo we are effing spoiled in a first world country i'll tell you what because i talk to my cousins like in the caribbean all the time and they hear the prices they pay for shit i'm like damn damn like simple stuff like phones that we have for instance right and then mm -hmm. we like me like we can throw out the, these conversations back and forth and we can be like i wouldn't pay this much for it i'd pay this and i, I think about the like what the rest of the world has to pay for the things that that we buy at certain prices and you know it's kind of that first world like privilege yeah i'm gonna mm -hmm. say it like we got a little bit of that first world privilege when it comes to some of these prices mm -hmm. it's crazy yeah. it's crazy but anyways crazy. Uh, AFTV news goes on to say that obviously there's better values and bangs for your buck if you're looking to like the 55 inch and the 65 inch and stuff like that so um obviously do your own research when you're looking for things but if you're ever looking for an amazon related device never go with an off sale price because there's a sale always around the corner always around yeah. the corner absolutely okay here's my next one my next resolution uh nintendo where are you i need a new console they gave you one bro they gave you one no that's not a new console that's they just put a better oled screen to what they <laughs> currently have no i need a new console and and and, and let me say this slowly i need a new console keyword console <laughs> I want to be able to plug it into my TV and leave it there. I don't want this on the go crap. They're not going to do it. They're they they need to do something. They I need a new console. Damn it! Um, no, I'm gonna do they one of their their most popular devices was that Nintendo Wii, and that thing revolutionized like gaming all around like with their motion stuff like with those remotes playstation jumped on board xbox jumped on board um everybody everybody had to adapt to that and it's always nintendo moving on like they're the ones that are always pushing the envelope and it, it, I, it, I remember I'm, I'm a sony pony i like my sony <laughs> you are a sony pony bro i love my playstation bro and I get really mad when Xbox is lazy and they do stupid shit because every time they do stupid shit, what happens? PlayStation kicks their feet up and says, cool, we don't have to try as hard. And proof's in the pudding. When PlayStation 3 came out and when the Xbox 360 came out, the Xbox 360 beat the living crap out of the PlayStation 3. And I mean, in the beginning of the VR battles, Xbox was ahead. Xbox was, but dude, Xbox, need... they were ahead on remotes, they were ahead on VR, the they remotes, were ahead the on the camera, same, bro. they were ahead on games, they were ahead on shooters. They were that 360 put PlayStation on check, and then xbox shot themselves in the foot when the xbox one came out and the P ps4 just destroyed the crap out of them and i get it there's gonna be people that are just like oh halo hit the halo whatever <laughs> there's gonna be people that love xbox no matter what and that's fine they have exclusive games that they're gonna like but xbox 
screwed themselves when they fired their guy that that made their freaking camera that revolutionized it. They shot themselves when they got rid of all of indie games and decided to make their own Microsoft gaming originals, whatever department. And PlayStation said, hey, indies, come over here. They also shot themselves when they didn't do anything to their remote. They kept it the same over and over and over and over and over. And now all they're doing is they're relying on their department to create games for their platform instead of outsourcing it and going after other people like PlayStation has so many exclusives outside of Sony. Plus they have a lot of uh, like PlayStation's um, games that are in Sony. Plus they have all these crazy games that are like they have, they have like an endless library and what they're doing with VR now with what they're doing with their motion, what they're doing with their camera, everything that the PlayStation is doing now is just they're, they're pushing the envelope. But the thing is, is when PlayStation and the PlayStation and Xbox are like two brothers, like they just like to battle it out back and forth. Here comes dad, Nintendo and says, Hey, guess what? Nintendo's the dude. Nintendo's their dad. <laughs> Nintendo's their dad. I know you don't like it, but whatever. Nintendo comes in and says, "Hey, guess what? Here's something new." And then PlayStation and Xbox goes like, "Wait, what? What is that?" And then they try to replicate it. And Nintendo always does this. So I'm just gonna say, I am not a big enough gamer to be swayed one way or another. I, I've never had a PlayStation. I do play Xbox, um, but typically I only play like one game at a time. I don't know anything about the indie market. I don't know anything about that stuff. So I can't defend, I can't deny, or I can't agree with the claims that you're making in regards to Xbox. Um, then that's just my honest opinion. I can't just look I can't at it, just research it. Remember, I I'm, I I, I've never owned an Xbox. To be honest, I research this shit. Don't care because I don't care to do anything else but play Call of Duty on my Xbox. <laughs> Once in a while, I might play Rocket League. Like really, really once in a while, but like that's it. That's that's it. I'm done. I don't got time to like dive into all these other games and try to like go Dora the Explorer or whatever. I don't like. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Right. So like, my Xboxes because I have two serves one purpose. It's just so I can turn it on and play a quick game of Call of Duty, and that's it. I'm done. And the reason why I stick to Xbox is, is like I have a, I've only ever had Xboxes, and all of the friends that I play with are still Xbox only. So that has nothing to do with the consoles as far as my personal experiences because i've never experienced another console and i've never had to you know what i mean like my son loves xbox and he loves gaming on xbox but now he's more pc so like all that stuff it is what it is so i can't really confirm it my deny all that kind of stuff but when it comes to nintendo while you were talking there was an article that came out on the verge uh like no november and it says nintendo nintendo says its next gaming system will release in the year 20 xx so before 2100 that's when you're gonna get uh, <laughs> uh yeah <You're> stupid <laughs> <laughs> it says the nintendo switch with oled screen came out a few months ago that com companies are already talking about uh some kind of a successor uh, to its wildly popular handheld hybrid uh, in the presentation to investors, Nintendo hints towards some of its plans in an extremely unspecific way. The company plans to continue to expand its business around the core concepts of creating unique, integrated hardware software products. That is such a blanket ass statement. Like, holy shit. They could have just said nothing and not held a damn press conference. Yep. <laughs> Which I'm taking it to mean that the company will brace yourself, make more video games and video game hardware in the future. That's all that statement says. We will make more video games and more video games hardware in the future. Uh, on the slide, you can see for yourself on page 41 on the PDF, also at a timeline of some of its hardware efforts to, uh, and specifically includes its next gaming system to be slated as a release in an undefined 20XX date. <laughs> Look at that picture right below it. It says it shows uh, it shows the Nintendo DS, which I did have, and it has the Nintendo Wii, which I did have also 20, uh, 2004 to 2006. Years? And it was it, it's it's 
like look so the, by this the, by this math we should be seeing something by 2040 no <laughs> look it says 2004 and then the next one came 2017 so that's what 13 years oh i guess yeah <laughs> The way I see it is, <laughs> it sounds funny, but the previous consoles for PlayStation and Xbox was ten years. And you know what? I don't know if those dates are right. I'm gonna look it up. When did this? When? Now, now to be fair, there were consoles that came out after this, right? Yeah, those are wrong. Yeah, those dates are wrong. 2012 is when the Wii came out the the black one right yeah yeah so the black one's not even listed here but the black we wasn't much different than the other we was it i don't know i didn't i didn't have that one oh you're the we you're talking about the wii u yeah the wii u that's one yeah the wii u 2012 2006 was when the wii came out yeah that's yeah that, yeah yeah, so that one was 2006. The Wii U came out in 2012. But was there a big difference in the Wii U and the Wii, though? Not much. It's just handheld is what they did. Mm. They, just, they just went handheld, which is they pretty much took the Nintendo DS and then rounded it off and put one giant screen instead of the two. That's pretty much what they did. And then the Switch came out, which was an evolution of the Wii U, which is kind of stupid. I don't see the switch as a actual console. We try to make it like both like, Oh look, you can get both, but um, yeah. So the switch came out in 2017 and see these dates all come out like a year or two after the PlayStation comes out or Xbox comes out. And we just had the, the, the Xbox and PlayStation come out just recently. So if we do that math, these guys are due for one anywhere between 2022 and 2024. I would lean closer to 2025, at least. I don't think so. We'll see. Only time because it's tell. it's usually it's usually like either one to one to two years, maybe even three years after PlayStation and Xbox. That's usually when they drop something. And this that 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 statement that the Verge did, I kind of, I I don't scroll up a little bit. It's 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 like the very first thing that you said, and I, and I hate when when journalists do this shit. Um, where'd you go? That's not what I want. Go back. I want, I'm trying to find something. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Um. With what you were saying is, well, I, I don't know what you're, what 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 you said again. Um. But at the top, it said something about no no the first sentence. The first, the, the first thing it says, uh, Nintendo with their OLED screen, it's only a month old. I hate when people do that because that is not a new console. That is not a new console. This isn't something brand new and it's they just came out. It's not. All they did was they put a shinier screen on it. It's kind of like saying like, oh, guess what, guys? The PS5 Pro just came out. It's a brand new console. No, it's not. It's still the PlayStation 5. It's still the PS5. That's what it is. They called it Pro because they're just adding more memory to it. Or they did something. You know what I mean? It's not It's not new. It's not the next evolution of stuff. So I hate when journalists do this shit. Um, when, when, when they claim like, oh, it's not even an, a month old. It's like, dude, it came, like th the Switch came out in 2017. And they just added a, a new screen, but this is—I don't know. I, I I understand why they're doing it, but I don't like it. And so what? Like the PS4 and the Xbox had these Pro versions that were coming out the same year that the new Xbox and the new PlayStation Five was coming out. You know what I mean? What? Side message. Oh. I'm like, what? What are you? What are you looking at? Um, okay, but um, yeah, I don't know, man. It just kind of—I don't know. To me, it rose me the wrong way. Um, 
He just runs right up to me the wrong way. The the problem the problem is is that Nintendo, like Nintendo, is constantly going after people who are sharing emulators, ROMs, even people that are doing screen recordings and sharing it on YouTube. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole YouTube stuff, but the emulators and ROMs, there's a big market because people still want to play those games. Now, I get it that there is another market for, you know, adolescents, uh, young adults, um, whatever, and people that want to have those handheld consoles. But by them not having a place for them to play some of these, you know, retro style games or the continuation of these retro style games, I think they're missing out on a big market. You can't keep coming after these websites that are, that are sharing emulators and ROMs and not understand the actual underlying issue is that people want to play these damn games. The people. If you give the people what they want, then you don't have to go around suing everybody. Like, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so for gaming, what is your resolution? Are are you? I know you don't game, but are you hoping? Um, are you hoping Nintendo does come up with a new console? Are you hoping that Xbox comes up with something even cooler? Are you hoping for PlayStation, even though you're not yeah. a Sony pony, to drop their VR two? Actually, that's another resolution of mine. Please drop it in 2022. The VR. I would like from Nintendo. A little tiny cloud device. I know it sounds crazy, but I want a little tiny cloud device that works. That that's really really cheap because you don't need some crazy hardware. And I would be willing to pay for a monthly service that gives me access to retro and newly upgraded retro style games. That's what I want, and and something that's multiplayer where you could just you know flip it on real quick and you got some people over at your house and you want to play for a player of some like i don't know battle toads or like Nint uh, ninja toads, turtles bro. or something right Dude. like <laughs> right that's what i'm saying like I, I want something like that directly from nintendo but i but i want it to be cloud based and i want it to include a whole f ton of a library and that's possible right i mean p there's shit out there that's being sold like that already but i want it from nintendo yeah, I agree. I would, I would, I would pay Nintendo for that. Right, but I want it to be cloud based so that the device itself is not that expensive. You don't need a lot of hardware to run some of these retro style stuff. Like, Dude, I want it directly from Nintendo. And you could compete against Stadia and GeForce and all that, all those other cloud gaming stuff. But this would be from Nintendo directly to yeah. play all your retro game. And you know what? Right. Anything, anything that I would call retro, don't put, don't put something that's out from the Switch onto this cloud until you right. make your next console. Then you add on to your library. You know, I, I would probably take it to the next step and say I would be okay even if the console didn't come from Nintendo and it came from Nvidia. Mm. And they bundled it with GeForce Now. I would be okay with that. Right, because that's that's a selling point. Because they do have a relationship with N Nvidia. They do, right? Because Nvidia makes the 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 chips for their 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 consoles. So that would be an interesting thing to see. Because um, GeForce now is so heavily into cloud based gaming, it would be cool for them to come out with a, a better freaking shaped dongle than the one that they have, and it comes with more of a Nintendo integration. That would be pretty cool for me, and I would probably. Uh, like that could end up being my main Android device at that point. Dude, that actually would be pretty dope, man. Yeah. Well, as you know, NVIDIA Tegra is now sold to Nintendo and they could actually do a lot of stuff with it. And, and Nintendo doesn't need crazy. It, I know we talked about this too, where Nintendo doesn't need crazy graphics um, or they don't need a crazy graphics card because their graphics are not as crazy. But when you could make those cartoons look like you're watching a TV show, or when you can make those cartoons look like 4K or 8K or just insanely clean like that because you don't have to worry about like actual people looking real in the game. Like I want them to push that envelope for for like you said cloud gaming and put those new graphics card, put those new chipsets, put the latest and greatest stuff and move your resolution up to 4K or 8K and make it look so freaking sharp that you don't know if you're actually watching a freaking cartoon or if you're playing a game like the last time i experienced that and i know you don't like 
this show, South Park, when I played their video game, South Park, on the PlayStation, I felt like I was watching the cartoon show. Right, right, right. right. And if Nintendo could do something like that, I'm all for that cloud gaming, bro. Like, if they could do that cloud gaming and 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 maybe they don't even have to create a device or if they do like a little cloud thing that you could move it around or maybe just an app. If they could have an app that you could do that with, I'm in. I'll I'll pay for that monthly subscription. I'm I'm totally in. As soon as you said Battletoads, I was like, bro, that is dope. That's exactly what I would want. But yeah, like you need a new Battletoads, you need a new F Zero. Like there's there's a bunch of stuff that it would be nice to see again. Like um, I had like the spaceship game growing up called Phalanx, and it was like a spaceship, and you could upgrade your spaceship and you shoot and stuff. And it's a lot of games that I grew up on. Um, the Spider Man games uh like there, there, there's some really cool stuff i had uh maximum carnage uh that was a good game there's a lot of good nintendo games that are staples and people like we want to be able to you know the new consoles they're really really good at multiplayer when people are not at your house but mm-hmm. when people at your house, it gets a little complicated. You're always wondering, does this support local multiplayer? Because you never really know these days, right? Yeah. So we need some more standard devices that are not overly expensive, that support simple, easy games. Like even some of the games that you see on your phone. Like This is a poor example, but like phones like Zuma, or not phones, games like Zuma. Everybody was going mm-hmm. crazy. Candy Crush. Like if you can get simple games like that, that are mm-hmm. multiplayer, like obviously a different concept. But those games don't require a lot of hardware to run. You know what I mean? Put it on the cloud. Put it on the cloud, and then you could have fun, easy games with the person that's sitting next to you, right? And I think that we really need some of that to bring some of the relationships closer together in in the households, right? A lot of times we spend time with the people in our house, but we're not actually spending time with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it'll be cool, too, because they don't have to worry about remote controls either. Just use Stadia. Or use NVIDIA's, like they have their own remote control. Right, right. Shoot. If if, if they could strike a deal with PlayStation and Xbox, they'd be like, hey. They wouldn't. They wouldn't, but that would be badass. (laughs) But I I could see them more likely to do it with Stadia or GeForce. They'll never do it with Xbox or PlayStation, but. One can dream. Yeah, I guess. (laughs) Cool. So, all right, we're going to end the show here, guys. I know there's a lot of resolutions that we got. If. Whatever you guys have as a tech resolution, put that in the comment section below. Let us know what is that you guys want when it comes to tech stuff. Um, There's just so many things out there and so many cool stuff, and it'll be really, really great to get some of this stuff, you know, and there's more, there's so much, like we didn't talk about cell phones. We didn't talk about the Nvidia shield. We didn't talk about like future computers, and I know, I know, freaking com- when it comes to computers, every couple, every month, they're dropping something, a new chip, a new graphics card. Like everybody's dropping something with computers. It's just moving so fast. But let us know what you guys think. Uh, let us know what you guys are looking for as a new tech resolution. Um, not evolution. Hopefully, he's doing good. <laughs> but um, next level. What do you got to say before we get the hell out of here? Uh, New Year's, stay safe. Uh, make sure that you are doing uh, some some good positivity in your life, bringing it in and giving it out uh, going into the next year. Uh, things are still pretty crazy around the world. Um, so just make sure that you're not crazier than the rest of the world. Uh, that's how you keep saying, I guess. I don't know how else to put it, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for your support. Uh, thank you guys for checking out uh, our, our our content over the last you know year or two years. Uh, we've constantly been putting out more content for you guys and we're trying to listen out to what you guys enjoy. Um, so thank you guys for your feedback. Thank you guys for your support. Make sure that wherever you're listening to the podcast on the audio side, you're leaving those reviews. So other people like yourself can find the content that you enjoy. Uh, make sure that you're also following us on the YouTube side on the beyond the streams, YouTube channel, so that you can also be a part of the conversations. If you have those notifications on then you'll already know that we have live streams typically every Thursday between three to 4 PM Eastern standard time. And that way you can be part of the conversation. You can be part of the community and you can chat live with us while we're doing our live streams. Uh, we also have the beyond the streams or the BS clips YouTube channel, which is called just BS clips. 
and you can find little bite-sized pieces of the conversation that you can just grab while you're on the go and catch up on some really important in interviews, conversations, topics that we've had over the last year or two. Uh, so some really, really good juicy bites that you can find on BS Clips. Again, guys, uh, make sure that you check us out. You have your notifications on and you're subscribed to as many plates as possible because you'll never know where the conversation's going to go or who we're going to have on here. So just, again, make sure you're staying safe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace. Happy New Year.